Midwin Charles, a, a number Morning. of um, politicians criticised for Morning. not being uh, as overt with their criticism of President Trump as you are being. Some people are saying, well, the comments were racist. He says, I don't have a racist bone in my body. A lot of people saying doesn't actually make him a racist, does it? Well, I think the sort of hoopla as to whether or not the, the words he said were racist is a little bit beyond the point. I think what you have to do is focus on whether the person has done racist things. Mm. That is what makes someone racist. And if you look at Donald Trump and go as far back to the 1970s, he has done racist things. He has refused to rent to black people. He has refused to acknowledge that the Central Park Five are innocent. He was the father of birtherism, denying where uh, Barack Obama came from. He believes, he said that, uh, you know, uh, NFL uh, players who were protesting police brutality were sons of bitches. I mean, this is someone who has consistently over for decades demonstrated mm. that he does not like black people. He does not like people of color. So I think it's important to look at it from that lens and not just exactly what his words were. Now, of course, telling people of color, go back to where you came from, is classic textbook racism. I've heard that myself ever since I was about five years old. You know, uh, what's the most unfortunate thing here is that Donald Trump was not original in his race, in his racism. I mean, almost every single black person or person of color has heard that statement. So I think it's important to focus on, you know, if you don't want to be labeled a racist, don't do racist mm -hmm. things. OK, let's go to Antony Scaramucci. I mean, Anthony, I you said a very interesting thing yesterday. You and I both know Donald Trump well. We both like him personally. And we both consistently said, notwithstanding a lot of what Mubin just said there, that we don't believe in his heart he's a racist. I've seen him around many black people, never seen him be remotely racist or have indi any indication of being racist. However... As you said, uh, I think, yesterday, if you keep saying stuff which is racially charged, or, frankly, in this case, in my opinion, racist, in other words, you tell people who are not white to go back to places they come from and sort, you know, and, and so on, which is a racist trope. trope. I mean, it's the most old racist trope of them all. Um, if you say this often enough, this kind of stuff, then eventually you, you, have, you have to be deemed a racist. It, it's very hard to argue with that. So you and I are in agreement. We both like the president. I could add a couple of things that he's done that demonstrates that he's not a racist. He, he helped to get the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday sanctified here in New York, where the stock exchange closed. He worked with Reverend Je Jesse Jackson and Rosa Parks on that. He obviously moved for prison reform, and he certainly helped the African-American community and the Hispanic-American community on the economy where they have the lowest unemployment rates and in the recordation of those rates. But let me tell you something, Pierce, that comment is unacceptable. Mm. And it's also unacceptable to me and my family, where as Italian Americans in the 1920s, they were told to go back from mm. where they came from and, and Irish American family. So it's not just uh, one spectrum of people. Well, his own it's family. all spectrums his of ethnicities. His, and... his own family, Anthony, you know, his grandfather came from Germany. Right? I imagine mm -hmm. when he first came to America, I bet people said to him, go back to Germany. He should walk it back. He's not capable of doing that. He'll double and triple down on it. What I'm very upset about is you got all these elected Republicans that know it's wrong and they're quietly telling people that it's wrong, but they won't publicly say it, OK? It's, it's quite shameful and it <clears> lacks <throat> courage. Uh, the, the country would be way better off if elected officials mm -hmm. on the Republican side came out and said, hey, these are racist comments. Why don't you knock it off? Yeah. And by knocking it off, hopefully it would correct and his behavior and he would stop it. Yeah, Midwin? But, but, but also, I think it's important, and, and I, I actually agree with Anthony, I think it's important for these Republican lawmakers who are elected officials to exhibit leadership and call things what they are. Part of the reason why we are here today is because a lot of people, particularly people in power, refuse to call things what they were. Back in 2015, when Donald Trump said that Mexicans were all rapists and he just rode down that escalator and declared his candidacy, uh, you know, when he uh, well, said hang on, that... Hang on, Midwin, 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 Midwin. Wait let's a minute, not, wait a minute. When he no, said that no, a judge it's of Mexican it's important, heritage it's important could to, not be... When Midwin. he said that a judge of Mexican Midwin, heritage it's important, you have could to, not be unbiased. Midwin, so he has say been saying these things for a long time. Midwin, Midwin, and if, you, if, Midwin, if no one said Midwin, anything back then, that's how we got to where we are today. Midwin, yes, Piers. Here's my point. 
On this particular point yes. about what he said this week, we're all in agreement. So let's start uh -huh. from that premise. We all, I think, think it was a Correct. racist comment and Correct. unacceptable. But when right. you say, as you just did, that he said all Mexicans are rapists, he never said that. So let's try and quote the president accurately. It's important that he is held to account for stuff he actually said. He didn't say that. He said Mexico... But guess what, Piers? He said Mexico is sending a lot what, of bad Piers? people, including he, some rapists and so on. Uh, it's yes. important to get it right. Yes, but you know what? Just about every country sends a few really bad people. Mm. But I agree. why would he I agree. highlight only Mexicans? I agree. Well, why because, would he highlight only Mexicans? Because he has an the issue... The messaging from this president... Yeah from day one has been consistently to disrespect and denigrate Latin Americans, yep. black people, and mm -hmm. it, he has been consistent. You haven't heard him tell anyone from a white country to go back. In fact, it was African countries in Haiti, where my parents are from, that he called shithole countries. I agree. He didn't call any uh, uh, European right, countries shithole Midwin. countries. Midwin. So this president has been consistent. Midwin, we just want to apologize for using that language, yes. even though the president did know, say it. But this is what is extraordinary, Midwin, because we do, we are right. under obligation to offer an apology for the word that you just used and language that you used a little I'm bit sorry. earlier on. You are literally I'm quoting. Sorry. No, it's okay. Well, I mean, obviously it's I not okay. We've had the to president apologize. of the United States. We are you are quoting the pre the the man in the highest well, office okay. in but again, the United States. But again, States. but again How does he get away Susanna, with using again, this language? Again, let's not get too hysterical. He was reported to have said that in private. He didn't say it in public and he's denied it. So let's put things into some perspective. Anthony, let me ask you this, though. Here's a more difficult question, I think, probably for Midwin and for you, in terms of what may be really going on here. Donald Trump got elected uh, by using a lot of this kind of inflammatory language. You know, there's no question that played a part in his appeal to his base in middle America. And when I saw yesterday the four targets of his latest attack... Uh, getting together and calling themselves the squad. He doesn't want to face a mainstream candidate Joe because Biden. that would be problematic. Mm -hmm. He wants the face of the Democrats to be these women, the squad. In other words, there's so, a political so play here. Yeah, so I absolutely think that that's the play, and we could argue about the strategy, but it's likely to be a brilliant strategy. But the tactics of doing <laughs> it the way he's doing it, Pierce, uh, it's un American. It's against the ideals of America. He could simply say, these four people look at their ideas, look at the socialism, look at the praise of ISIS, look at the anti-Semitism, and he could box them in a way. He's a very clever guy. You know, he's one of the best marketers in the world. He could do it that way. But by using these racist tropes, mm. what he's doing is he's dividing the country and he's making a very big mistake. He's going to lose the people in the middle that he needs to win re-election. And you know, people in this country don't remember McCarthyism, but McCarthyism didn't go out in a supernova. What happened to McCarthyism, people just got exhausted from it and it went away. And the president is now running the risk that he is fraying everybody's temper. Yep. He is causing a tremendous amount of anxiety and polarity in the country. And people are going to say, hey, I've had enough of okay, this. Midwin. Even though the policies are great, yeah. I've had enough of it. I agree. Mid Midwin, let me ask you that question I put to Anthony, because I think there is a political play here, and it is a serious concern, I would argue, for the Democrats, as they're scrabbling to find the right kind of candidate to try and beat Trump, that if, if the whole narrative of the Democrats running into 2020 is socialism as espoused by these four congresswomen, and it's what they believe in, and that's really the point Trump was trying to make in his cack-handed and racist way. Uh, is that a problem for the party? I, I, I'm not even particularly sure that I understand what it is that you mean, that, that this is a strategy. I mean, racism should never be a strategy. Mm. I think that... You know, racism has always been what Donald Trump has led with. It's what he's always been most comfortable with. It just so happens that what he did was when he realized the backlash, all of a sudden he started harping on this fact that these women are socialists, you know, because they want Medicare for all and they want a minimum, a livable wage for mm. people. But whatever with the labels, at the end of the day, you know, racism is the feature with this president and we have seen it from day one, but we have seen it throughout his life. Life. He's been very, very consistent with that. So to say, to sort of minimize this and say that this is some sort of strategy, I, I just don't think that that's accurate. I don't think that that's what's happening here. Okay. I think what well, he did was when he realized...
realized mm -hmm. the the outcry, he sort of latched onto this idea of, oh, well, they're socialists and and so they're bad for America. And 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 you know, mm. that was just his way of trying to diminish the situation. Okay. Uh, look, we can argue about that, but the, the bottom line is it's a very incendiary thing to have said. I think we can all be in agreement that he shouldn't have said it and that it is racist. And that's the bottom line. And I wish President Trump would stop this kind of chat because I think it's very harmful.